Hi, it's Tebby Leno here today, joining you with my friend Nadine. Um, I'm the founder of Luma Life Wellness and Coaching, creator of the private Facebook page, The Ageless Woman. And thank you for those of you who are able to jump on live. And for those of you who can't, the replay is always available on my Facebook page. Today's topic I'm, I'm really anxious about because it's, it's just such a great topic, especially for those who love chocolate. And the topic today is the art of pleasure through self-care and fine chocolate. And so joining me today for her home, from her home in New Jersey is my friend Nadine. We met while attending school, um, the Institute of Integrative Nutrition in New York. And we've just been friends ever since. And I have had the pleasure to really watch Nadine just grow and grow with all her gifts. And um, she has some really neat things that she has added along the way since I first met her. Um, she's the owner of Artisan Nutrition and Barometer Chocolate. She's here with us to share her passion for chocolate, healthy living, connecting people to their bliss through the art of savoring in her online luxury boutique, Barometer Chocolate. She's a certified chocolate sommelier, judge for the International Chocolate Awards, and certified holistic health coach. Nadine sparks human transformation through an exploration of pleasure, ease, and mindfulness. Her core belief is that health and pleasure are inextricably linked. She encourages her clients to celebrate the magic of life through the pleasures of fine chocolate. According to Nadine, wellness is all about having the unbounded vibrancy to live, love, and learn with a joyful, open mind. Nadine's passion and message is, <laughs> I love this, mm -hmm. celebrate the magic of life through the pleasure of fine chocolate. Go ahead, live a chocolate-covered life. She enjoys spending quality time with her husband, kids, cat, uh, living with great appreciation of the beautiful natural world, juicing, plant-based cooking, baking, fine dining, travel, reading. Um, she just, she loves, she loves life. <laughs> so thank you, Nadine, for being with me here today. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so delighted and honored to be here. Oh, it's my pleasure entirely. So I love it. I always like to ask my guests to start with uh, their early days. Uh, what you, th what life was like for you as a child, and what your thoughts were, and and what drove you to the path that you chose. Well, I grew up with loving mom and dad, um, but the watchword in the home was fear, and I think when we live in a in a, a place where you don't always feel safe and secure. Uh, that engenders a sense of scarcity. So with that, I was still, I was born a child um, who loved pleasure and I loved luxury and I loved imagination and whimsy. And so there was a bit of a disconnect for me. And it was a struggle at times because I was trying to make sense of this home where there was a lot of, um, you know, fear and trying to move forward with my path, which wasn't quite aligned with, with theirs. You know, I think that a lot of us, especially in my age group, can relate to, to that sort of upbringing. Um, you know, I'll oh, be careful of this or don't do that. Or, yes. you know, it's just the way our parents grew up, you know, to be very yes. careful of everything. So, yeah, I'm sure that's very relatable for many of us. Yeah. And my mom was, she was such a dear kind woman, she loved animals, she cared about people, but fear was how she lived and it was sadly how she died. And um, through her watching her life and her death, I went to IIN and I, I made a lot of changes in my life and realized that it had to be motivated by a sense of pleasure and the sense that health and pleasure are inextricably linked. So was that, I have to ask this question, was it a, was it a challenge to you or did you, or did you feel like you were just coming into your own, like, okay, I'm an adult now and I'm on this path and I know this is for me and I know this is, this is part of who I am. Did it seem like a natural thing to, to go to, to be in that space or did you, because of the upbringing for so many years, was it a struggle to get past those old beliefs? Yes. And yes. Okay. <laughs> it was both, cool. really, you know, and um, it's, uh, I still think of it as a work in progress, but I, I, I'm so fascinated by that juncture where health and pleasure meet because I really feel like 
that's where my power is and that's where so many women's power is. Definitely. You've had some influences along the way um, that have helped you in your journey of uh, seeking pleasure. Um, so would you like to share some of that? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, in fact, just recently, I've been reading um, Kelly Brogan's book, Own Yourself, and uh, mm. listening to some interviews of hers as well. And she's a little bit controversial right now, but she has some really beautiful things to say. And she talks about reclaiming your sovereignty, which I think is such a beautiful, mm. powerful message. And I think it really is part of health and pleasure because you can't really have health and pleasure without being in your own, living in your own light and your own power. You know, there was another book that I kind of remember you sharing with me. Um, and I cannot remember the title of it, Nadine, but I so clearly remember you telling me about it. Um, it was about igniting that inner flame. And I, for the life of me, I cannot remember the author of that book. You might not either. I might have put you on the spot by asking yeah, you that. Sure. But I will say another book that has been very influential for me is The Four Agreements. Oh, yes. That's, yeah. I'm familiar with That's a good one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm trying to think what book you're thinking of. I read so many books. Yeah. Should, this, this woman really speaks about really coming into your own, you know, um, the inner flame. The power of the inner flame really being, you know, um, sexy, pleasurable. Uh, I can't, I I can't think of talking about. I know who you're talking about. Okay. Jenna Laflamme. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's the one. That's she's the like one. The sexy goddess lady. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. Really, she, she has been influential as well because she really, she embraces her pleasure unapologetically. And um, it's very inspirational. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you like to talk about first? Um, creating artisan nutrition and your lifestyle that went with that. And I know you did some other things along the way that really, uh, you know, helped you to further your your uh, healthy lifestyle, um, which I don't know if you want to talk to that or not. Um, I can. But whatever the stage is yours and whatever you feel that, you know, you would like to share. Well, um, sort of like fine chocolate, the kind of chocolate that I sell my path is not linear. It's just like fine chocolate, how it, there's a, an arc, um, top notes, middle notes, finishing notes. So my, my career path has sort of meandered a little bit. And um, I've always been fascinated with health. So I became a health coach and I've worked with dozens of clients. Um, and I still work with clients one-on-one, -on -one, which I love. Um, I became very involved in detoxification lifestyle plant-based nutrition. So um, I actually wound up um, going to Florida and learning the, the art and craft of hydrocolonic therapy. That's very fascinating. Yes, it's, it's an yes. awesome, wonderful and um, incredible practice. So I'm not currently practicing that. Um, I have practiced it on many individuals, but I'm not currently doing that. Though I do, I am a uh, recipient of hydroclonic therapy regularly. And, um, but then I realized that there were many twists and turns. One of my mentors um, sadly passed away. And um, I realized that the chocolate, which has always been with me from the time I was a young child loving pleasure, um, I decided that that was really where my heart was. And so I started this online boutique called Barometer Chocolate. Um, I would say about a little over a year ago, I became a judge for the International Chocolate Awards, which is amazing. What a fun job. Yeah, it's so fun. And I've, I've met wonderful people. Um, the two heads of the International Chocolate Awards have been wonderful mentors to me. And um, I'm just very delighted to be aligned with them. I can't imagine, I mean, most people just eat a chocolate bar. Or they'll go, oh, you know, um, I'll go to that store. They have really nice chocolates. But I mean, what you're doing is like such a step above that. Can you can you tell us or share with us the difference between commercial chocolate or a fine chocolate that you see boxed? And you know, uh, Esther Price would be one that I could think of. Um, and and what is the difference between your chocolate experience and what is currently out there commercially? 
Yeah, um, I'll try to make the answer not terribly long, but basically there are two kinds of cacao. So cacao is the plant that chocolate comes from. It's a bean. Um, the beans grow in a beautiful, colorful pod. And there are fine flavor cacao beans and there are commodity beans. So commodity beans are grown um, to be hearty, kind of like genetically modified food. It's um, There's not a lot of beautiful um, nuances in the flavor. It's, it's sort of like my teacher calls it the Darth Vader of chocolate. It doesn't have, um, it doesn't have an arc. So it's a very linear experience. But when you have fine flavor cacao that um, is grown in beautiful soil, winds up taking on the terroir of mm. you know, where, where it is, um, what's grown nearby, the elevation, the climate, all of this affects the soil and affects the actual beans. And you can have ama an amazing range of flavors. So cacao, fine flavor cacao is, has actually twice as many flavor chemicals as wine. Oh, wow. Yeah. There are about 400 flavor chemicals. Wow. Who would, who would know? Who would yeah. know? All Only chocolate sommelier would know this. Yeah. <laughs> From <laughs> fruit to spice to earth to even chocolate is a note in chocolate. Um, floral. There's so many different beautiful aromas and flavors. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And so that's that's the hallmark of the cacao and the chocolate that I deal with. Um, they're all award winning bars. And when you savor them mindfully, you can't believe how just a small little bit will be this incredible experience that makes you feel very grounded and um, in love with life. Well, can I ask you to do something for us? Sure. Do you have a little piece of chocolate handy with you? Oh, of course. I was <laughs> I, okay. You know, nowadays that we have to wear masks in the stores, I can't, I used to walk around with chocolate in my purse all the time. And when I would see even strangers, like if I would see them in the chocolate aisle, I would be like at Whole Foods, I'd be like, here, try some of my chocolate. Um, I can't do that anymore, but oh, I goodness. happen to have some chocolate right here. So and show um, us how to properly taste chocolate. I mean, so, you know, like, how, I mean, even just detecting the flavors to me is like so different. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. Well, um, I'll show you these two bars that I that I brought to. I don't know if you can see them. Oh, but they're beautiful. Oh, I just love the wrappers. I'm trying to get it in the frame so you can see it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, does this look like a commercial bar? Yeah. Uh, no. no. You can oh, they're beautiful. see some of the symbols of the awards that they've won. Wow. This, this one is an 80%. Um, and this gentleman is called um, El Mamo Camilo, Camilo. And he is the spiritual leader um, of this group in Colombia where they grow the cacao, uh, the Arhuaco people. And um, the maker had his portrait painted. Oh my goodness. And it's actually a great story because when she showed him the portrait, he was like, hmm, I like it. He said, but I think my, my chin is a little too round. It's not quite the, <laughs> um, he's like this very spiritual guy, but yet he, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 That, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. So it's just 80% bar. And I'm going to show you how I go about tasting it. So of course, the first thing I always do is admire the wrapper, which I just did. The other thing I always do is I always have, a beautiful little plate Aww. and I have, I have dozens of beautiful plates um, just for the purpose of savoring chocolate. So that's adorable. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, I think it makes everything taste unique when you have a fancy little plate to put it on. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. This is a ritual and um, it's a daily deliberate ritual of pleasure that I engage in every day. It's like, I don't skip a day. And sometimes people say, oh, Nadine, you know, uh, how do you how do you manage having chocolate and staying healthy? But when you savor chocolate the way I do, it can be very much part of a health routine. I like that. Yeah. I like that. So so this is not about just eating a whole bar of chocolate. This is Correct. about savoring a small little. I mean, do you take like a little square? Yeah. So oh, that's it. tiny squares. I mean, this is probably it's less than, it's probably less than a quarter ounce. That I would think it'd be a nice dose of dopamine. 
Yes. Well, I'm so glad you said that because actually there are so many neurotransmitters that are triggered um, when we eat when we eat chocolate. So there's serotonin, there's dopamine, there's phenylethylamine, um, wow. all these, um, trans neurotransmitters that create the sensation of well-being in the body, happiness, decreasing depression. Um, That's a great prescription, Nadine. I like yeah. this. Yeah, and, and simulates the feeling of being in love. In fact, um, some Italian researchers did a study that um, women, Italian women who ate chocolate regularly had a much better love life than the control group who did not. That's so. pretty amazing. That's pretty awesome, actually. Yeah. So eat your chocolate, everyone. So let I me like show it. You. Could I show you how I do it? Yes. Okay. So the first thing I do is I break my chocolate. So I try to use all of my senses. If you can experience the chocolate in a slow and sensual way, meaning through each one of your senses, the pleasure intensifies. So I put it by my ear and I break it. And what I'm listening for is a beautiful snap. So I'm gonna see, I hope you can hear it. Yes. Did you hear it? Okay. Yes. So that's the mark of a well-tempered chocolate, which means that the, it's a very scientific explanation, but basically that the, the cocoa butter crystals and solids are um, perfectly stacked. Wow. And it has to do with raising the temperature and lowering it in a very specific way to, cr to create this interlocking of the crystals. The next thing I do is I smell it. So 80% of what we taste comes from what we smell. And so you don't wanna skip that step. So I literally smell it like this, as if I'm telling it a secret. I, I put it right by my nose and then I cover the other side like I'm telling it a secret to keep those volatile aromatic compounds close, okay? And then sometimes what you smell is quite different from what you taste. So sometimes you might smell a little bit of spice, like here I almost smell a little bit of spice uh, and a little bit of earth, but I know in this bar that the flavor is very, very chocolatey, not a lot of spice. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and take a bite or two, and then I'm just going to let the rest melt in my mouth, which will take about seven seconds. All right, so you, everyone can like hum a song or <laughs> while I'm my chocolate. Mm. I am just thinking of it and tasting it as I'm watching you savor that. Debbie, it's so good. I literally, mm. when I watch somebody do that, I could, my mouth will start to water only because I'm, I'm, ex I am kind of living through your visual experience. Like, oh, that just looks so mouth watering. So good. Yeah. I and am. There's definitely an arc and the flavor changes. So it's going to take seven to 10 seconds with those top, middle, and finishing notes. There's like it blossoms and unfolds mm. as, as you go along. And what I often tell when I do my virtual, now I'm doing so many virtual tastings uh, rather than live ones because of the current situation. But I always tell my tasters, see if you can avoid getting it, the chocolate in, stuck in your molars because then every other chocolate, you're gonna detect the notes of that first one. Gotcha, yeah. yeah. So you don't wanna be chewing it, you wanna be letting it melt. Letting yeah. it melt, letting it melt. And when we, <sighs> try a number of different chocolates. Usually I start with the, the the chocolate with the highest percentage of cacao and work my way down to the sweetest or lowest percentage of cacao. If you do it in the reverse, uh, sometimes the high percentage cacao tastes a little too bitter and earthy. But I was just gonna ask you about that because the um, anytime I've tried a dark chocolate that is like 80%, 75 to 80%, it tastes so bitter to me. I was like, maybe I just have to try one of your bars. Yeah, there's a huge difference. So that's the difference between commodity cacao and fine flavor. When I give clients um, an 80% bar, they're like, I've had 70% bars that are way more bitter than this. The reason for that is that the commodity cacao is poor in quality. And so the, the makers over roast it. It's done in a factory. It's not a, a chocolate maker who's an artisan. It's you know, fact, a factory. There's a difference. It, very mechanized process. So the beans are very much over roasted so gotcha. that you can't detect how bad they are. And oh that, my goodness. that imparts that very bitter flavor. And then they throw in a ton of 
extra ingredients. So there's sugar, um, they use soy lecithin, which is an ingredient that I do not abide by in any of the bars that I sell, only um, cocoa butter if there's an added fat. So the chocolate that you purchase, it, is it, can it be purchased commercially or do you have to order, are they special ordered? Um, well, the makers, you know, are always making new batches depending on what's available to them. Some beans are only well, available just... certain times of the year. Like there's um, a wild Bolivian bean that's quite popular and amazingly delicious that several makers that I work with um, produce bars from but they only have that like once, the beans are only available once per year. Well, that does it. Yeah. I know who my source is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so if I want to have guidance on my chocolate, you would be the gal. Hey, Nadine, this is what I like. What can you recommend? <gasps> you'll, okay. be my, you'll be my new prescription for chocolate. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it really depends on, on what people like. I mean, the other bar that I brought here is, um, get it in the frame is a, a dark milk. A lot of people don't uh, don't even know that there is such a thing as a dark milk. People think that there's either dark chocolate or milk chocolate, but there's this beautiful, right. yeah, there's this beautiful category called dark milk, which is typically um, in the range from 50% to even could be 70%. So there's, a, but there's an inclusion of a little bit of, um, of milk, but with these fine flavor beans. So it doesn't taste anything like a Hershey bar that has, you know, a waxy consistency and no and no arc in the flavor. It's it's very nuanced and very beautiful. Mm. Yeah. So there's there's all kinds of there's so many categories and can can you recommend a way to not eat the whole bar? Yes. Yes. Well, Tell, please, do share. <laughs> first of all, when you go th if you really at first it might seem like a lot of work. Although I have to tell you, my clients really love it. This is good work. But when you go through the process of savoring the chocolate mindfully, you are satisfied with so much less chocolate. Like literally you could have an ounce of chocolate and it feels like you're full. It, it's just because you've really taken the time to, uh, to savor the experience and savor the moment. The other thing I like to do, I didn't do it just now, but I very often like to have clients do um, a grounding exercise before they start just to take them out of the you know crazy busyness of the day and be right here right now so sometimes i'll ask them to take a couple of deep breaths and um find a color in in their in their line of sight and just breathe in that color and then maybe focus on a sound in the environment and then breathe that in and then finally, well, not finally, then I'll ask them to focus on a sensation in the body, maybe how their clothing feels against their skin or something that itches. It could be pleasurable or just whatever comes up. Or noticeable, just something, just something noticeable. noticeable. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. finally I ask them to think about um, something that they're supremely grateful for in this moment mm. and to just bring that in and really feel it. And then you're ready to, then you're really ready to um, experience chocolate slowly and sensually. And I think to myself often, if we brought that same practice to our daily living, what changes could we observe in our own lives? Like if we literally approach the aspects of our day slowly and sensually the way chocolate melts, like wouldn't it be so beautiful? Oh my gosh, Nadine, <laughs> I, it makes me want to have a do-over. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do over. I want to do it mindfully the next time. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, that's so, that's like so special. Question, did I did I did I not answer completely your question about savor? How do I make it feel like a lot? Just basically going through all of those steps, I guess. Yeah, and I think maybe too, if you designated, um, I'm thinking about it from a health coach standpoint now too, is just maybe choosing the time of day to make it that, like, this is my ritual, like, this yeah. is my prescription uh, for my ritual, this is what I do, and 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 have, a, you know, just that little bit broken off, and that is, that is your pleasure, that is your pleasure ritual, and oh my gosh, I, I I'm going to incorporate this, but I'm also really inspired to do this in my yoga class. Oh yeah, but I've, done it, I've done it with yoga classes. It's beautiful. It's, yes, it's, it's a wonderful. Practice. It's very much 
um, in line with, it's in fact, m one of my best friends calls um, uh, what I do like the yoga of eating. Um, so for any of you who are watching this, if you attend my yoga class um, in Fairfield, um, I'm going to order some chocolate from Nadine uh, and we're going to do this. I No, seriously, Danita, I, I really am going to come to you for some exquisite chocolate and make it a, a happy, beautiful ritual. It's so cool. Thank you. Thank I, you. I love, I love your, I love what you chose for your career path and you're living what you always knew you were designed for. Yeah. I mean, I, um, I try as I walk through my days to when I'm trying to make a choice to ask myself, is this the most loving choice that I can make for myself right now? And if question. it's not, I try to course correct and it's a work in progress. You know, I'm not an expert. I'm just me. Um, but I, I work on it every day and um, chocolate. I feel for me, it helps to ground me and it helps to, bring me into the present moment and feel that state of bliss. That's just taking it to such a high level um, in such a way. It's such a, oh my gosh, it almost feels spiritual to me in a way, you know, just really connecting with the earth, really connecting yeah. with God's creation, cre you know, connecting with all things that are available to us and, and things done with love and perfection and uh, not tampered with. And, you know, something, I mean, just, knowing that there's so many more flavor chemicals available from a plant grown that way, as opposed to um, the, um, uh, how did you call it? The uh, commodity cacao. Yeah, the commodity. I'm thinking yeah. the rough bean, you know, the rough bean, not the good one. The rough, <laughs> the rough, bean. The rough, yeah, like the rough bean. Darth Vader, the Darth Vader. The Darth Vader bean, yeah. yeah. You know, and can I just say one other, well, I have a few things that I want to say about cacao that maybe the viewers might not realize, but cacao, well, it was originally called food of the gods. Mm. Uh, the tree is called Theobrahma cacao, which is food of the gods cacao. So, um, you know, that was Carolus Linnaeus long, long ago, many centuries ago. So he even recognized that this was um, a very special food. It has a very long history, but what I want to point out is that um, with cacao, we are able to have better access to the neocortex, um, mm. which is the center of creativity and innovation, inspiration, intuition. Um, nice. It's a very spiritual component to cacao. So it's not just that it's delicious and it's not just that there, are, you know, many people consider it a superfood because it has high levels of magnesium and calcium and iron and antioxidants and flavanols and all those great things. Um, but there is definitely a spiritual component to it. And um, it's been used in ceremony since, you know, 5000 BC. So, well, you just you just gave me such an education about chocolate that I did not. I mean, I knew, but I didn't know. So thank you so much for that. Do uh, now, do you store this type of chocolate in the refrigerator? No. Oh yeah. The thing it, I asked. Yeah. And it's a great question, and and um, customers ask me this all the time. But the best, the optimal conditions to store chocolate, even if you're buying, you know, store bought commodity cacao, is at room temperature, sixty five to seventy degrees. Um, a nice, cool, dry place out of direct sunlight, but not in the refrigerator. If you keep it in the refrigerator, first of all, chocolate's like a sponge. So it will take on the aromas of whatever is near it. So if you keep it in a cabinet where you keep potpourri, you're going to have potpourri chocolate, which is not a thing. So don't do that. <laughs> in your refrigerator, if you have fish, you're going to have fish chocolate. So and besides that, um, it creates a bloom. I don't know if you've ever noticed chocolate that's been sitting around for a while gets that sort of grayish white yes. bloom. Yeah, and that's literally the fat and sugar crystals coming to the surface it means that the bar is coming out of temper. So remember when I talked oh, about the snap and the yeah. crystals, cocoa butter crystals. So those crystals have now come out of alignment. Think of chairs stacking one upon another in a beautiful locking. The chairs have all come apart every which way. Um, so that's what being in the refrigerator will do, being stored at the wrong temperature. If you have a wine refrigerator, that you can control at 65. But that's perfect. That would oh. be fine. As long as you can control the humidity, it would be fine. 
Yeah, that's a problem in my house because I uh, live with somebody who doesn't like to have the air conditioning on. Ah. <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, he's, he's, met, he's met me halfway on that a little bit. So that's a good thing. Wow. Is there anything that you uh, would like to share with our viewers with the Age of Swimming group uh, before we say goodbye? It's something that you, something that, um, I don't know, some sort of something encouraging and something that you would love to leave the viewers with? Well, I guess I would say that um, health is really a journey, just like chocolate is not a linear fine flavor chocolate is not a linear path so it's the same with your health it can be wiggly at times and there can be high notes and low notes um but it's really i guess the destination it's the joy that you have as you're going through that path whether it's the health journey um the chocolate journey but um i guess just enjoy be there for the moment Yes, that's that's so important for today. Yeah, you know, being in the present moment is uh, it can be challenging, uh, especially when we tend to worry. You know, or right now worrying about the future, and um, that's one area that I I like to coach in a lot because of what we're going through. So, yeah, learning how to savor, learning how to be in the moment, um, and being gentle with yourself when you're not, because we're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to, very, you know, there are all going to be times when we're munching the bar in front of the refrigerator and not taking the beautiful opportunity to sit with your little plate. But it's okay. You still love yourself when you do that, too. It's all good. I like how you coined it wiggly, that yeah. our journeys sometimes can be a little wiggly and not to expect perfection. And I, I think that's a great message, too, is to stop being perfect. Perfection is I, I, Elizabeth um, oh, uh, Eat, Pray, Love. What's her? Elizabeth, um, I can't think of her last name. I can't think of her last name either, but I, I know who you're about. talking about. Mm -hmm. But she says perf uh, um, perfection is fear in fancy high heels. Oh, wow. Yeah. So That's a great, that's a yeah. great so quote. Open talking about fear. Like I'm very familiar with the perfectionistic um you know, probably coming out of my home life where there was a lot of fear. But um, yeah, when we mess up, it's it's part of our journey. It can't yeah. be any other way. We have to fall down and pick ourselves up. That's how we. That's how we get tough. Not tough, but that's how we get strong. I yeah. like that. Yeah, I think that's, that's where cool. our power is. Mm -hmm. in those, where we scrape our knees and get back up. That's that's the power. Is the resilience. The resilience. I love that. Ah, this has been wonderful. And and I am definitely going to connect with you. And hey, if anybody out there wants to connect with uh, with Nadine for some wonderful, wonderful chocolate that's worth it, okay. I'm, I'm definitely going to follow up with you. Uh, Barometer Chocolate, I have her website is on the uh, post that I, that I did to um, tell about this interview. And um, I'm definitely going to hit you up for some wonderful chocolate. And it's going to be, as soon as I get it, it'll be my next in my next yoga class. I, I am honored. Well, thank you. <laughs> Namaste, everybody. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Nadine. Thank you, Debbie. Bye, everybody. Bye.